Greenpeace is about taking action. It's all very well to see or perceive a problem and think that something needs to be done about it, but until you do something about it, then nothing's going to change. It's not about waiting for the government or big corporations to come in and do the right thing. It's about the collective power of the people coming together to make change for the planet. Greenpeace is an international environmental organisation and we pick the most critical environmental problems to work on. And how we do it is probably what is more well known about Greenpeace and that is that we use non-violent direct action. Greenpeace believes very firmly that violence is not the answer to problems, but they believe firmly at the same time taking action is very important. And so combining those two principles, I think Greenpeace is become one of the most effective agents for change that is in the world today. One of the best examples of non-violent direct action for Greenpeace was during the French testing campaign where France was testing its nuclear weapons in the Pacific. So Greenpeace took a ship and sailed into the testing zone and we, just by being there, by putting ourselves in harm's way if you like, the French were forced to stop their testing program. And that drew a lot of attention from the world and we were able to talk about why it was important that the French never tested anywhere with nuclear weapons or use them anywhere. We've got 40 odd officers all around the world, but all working on their local issue, but all contributing to a big picture. And when we're applying global consumer pressure, we can really make big corporations and international governments change their ways. Responsibility is a really important value for Greenpeace and if we do a direct action, Greenpeace will put its hand up and say, we did it. This is the reason why we did it and we'll take the consequences. The most important things I think with civil disobedience and the kind of civil disobedience that Greenpeace does is individual responsibility but also an organisational responsibility. We do break laws every now and again when we feel it's absolutely necessary, but we will never run away. I think that part of the philosophy of civil disobedience is you, you have faith in your convictions. It's a vital part of uh, what Greenpeace does that we are independent from governments and corporations. We take no money from those bodies. We're exclusively funded by private individuals and that means that we can challenge uh, governments and corporations uh, without the fear of having funding removed. And so it's a key part of what makes Greenpeace what it is. When you want to make change, there's lots of different tactics that you can use and there's never one single tactic that's probably going to win the day. You need a mixture of them. So Greenpeace is solutions oriented. That means that where we see a problem, such as through fossil fuel emissions causing climate change, uh, we fight to stop that, but at the same time we propose the alternative, which is renewable energy. Uh, a really good example in New Zealand is at the same time as we campaign to stop the Marsden B coal-fired power station, we're also supporting the production of a wind farm in Wellington. Uh, the coal-fired power station was stopped and the wind farm went ahead. You know, direct action is one of the unique things that Greenpeace does, and I think it's, it's arguably one of the most important things we do. Direct action is not about protest, it's not about yelling and screaming about what's going wrong, it's actually about getting out there and stopping it. So bearing witness is the idea that by witnessing something firsthand and showing that to people, that those people then become motivated and, and almost obliged to do something about the, the issue that you've shown them. We have amazing people that go into these regions like the Congo and the Amazon and Indonesia and they witness and document firsthand what's happening on the ground. So they'll gather evidence of illegal rainforest felling or um, local people being driven off their lands by loggers and you know, often at great personal risk to themselves they'll obtain this evidence. It's really, really important for us to maintain integrity. We really do need to know what we're talking about and we won't start a campaign unless we are dead certain that what we're saying is completely true. Greenpeace recognises that we're not going to win on our own, that we need to build alliances, coalitions, work with communities, work with our supporters so that we have an army of people that allow us to make the changes we need. 
Working uh, with other members of the community is a key thing for facilitating change. So for example, the work that Greenpeace did with Te Whanau up in Nui, uh, opposing deep sea oil drilling in the East Cape, was a great example of a, an alliance. One of the tactics that we often use is lobbying, lobbying governments and corporates. And it can be about what we think they're doing wrong or what we think they could do right. That they have the power to actually make a significant change by moving in a particular direction. Climate change is the most important issue that the whole planet faces today. If we don't fix this one, everything else we work on will pale into insignificance. We have to get this one right. The challenge of the climate change campaign is to move our society from its heavy dependence on fossil fuels which cause climate change to a reliance on renewable and clean energy. The healthy oceans are vital to a healthy planet and there's so many things that are threatening them at the moment. Part of what we're dealing with is the overfishing and the destructive fishing methods that are being used. And we're also trying to recreate a network of marine reserves to replace those safe havens that were once there and which are now being fished out. Greenpeace couldn't do what we do if it weren't for our supporters. They are incredibly important to us. And they're important to us in two ways. One is that we need them to campaign with us to make the changes we want to see. And two, they financially support us, so they back us to do what we think is important. We don't receive any money from the government or corporations, and that's by choice because we want to retain our independence. So our supporters are really the lifeblood of Greenpeace. Without them, we couldn't carry on and we couldn't continue to do the work that we do for the environment. So Greenpeace today is only as strong and effective as it is because of each individual supporter making that decision that they're going to make a difference and they're going to join Greenpeace.